Today I'd like to present a case to you of a 25 year old female who went for a routine examination with her GP and had a full blood count done for insurance purposes at the same time. She uh, showed on her full blood count a white blood cell count of 15 which as you can see here is slightly raised so just a little arrow there so it's slightly raised the hemoglobin was 13.5 which was totally normal and the platelet count of 15 was clearly very much decreased you can see in brackets I've put the normal values for you this is what it should have been somewhere between 150 and 400 and the laboratory t uh, technician looking at the smear reported that there was platelet clumping present now whenever you see a full blood count result with a low platelet count you need to ask yourself whether this platelet count is really uh, low is this true or could there be another reason a another reason why this is falsely decreased so a falsely low uh, platelet count now in this case the key word here is platelet clumping and this really gives the whole case away immediately and if you can recognize this you're going to be able to help a lot of patients because about a one one in a thousand patients um, will present to you with this phenomenon of platelet clumping and one out of ten patients presenting with thrombocytopenia will also be uh, due to platelet clumping so it's really when you see a platelet with low platelet count one out of ten will have this phenomenon and one has to recognize what it is so let's start by looking at how this blood was taken because this is actually really relevant in this case so we um, usually use a, uh, a purple top tube in most countries it may differ in some areas and the purple top usually just indicates that this tube contains EDTA so this is the normal full blood count tube and whatever color is used if it's contains EDTA um, that you can see here in the bottom of the tube Now, in real life that uh, would be transparent not as white as you see it here but this EDTA is an anticoagulant it just prevents the blood that you've taken from clotting now um, what happens when you add blood now so let's say you draw blood from your patient and you add that blood to this tube so we're going to put some blood in this tube here let's just get some blood taking some blood from the patient here in the background and there we're adding it to the tube and now this blood would be nicely mixed with uh, the EDTA so what will happen here now is that after you've mixed the blood with the EDTA you'll take it to your machine and in the machine the blood will be the blood cells will be counted individually you must remember that the different cells have got different shapes, different sizes, different complexities. For instance, um, a white blood cell might, may look something like that, contains a nucleus, while a red blood cell uh, is a nucleus, it does not have a nucleus, may look like something like that, and a blood platelet is just a little small dot on the screen. So the machine will distinguish between these different cells based on factors such as size and complexity. Size and complexity. And this is a really key issue here. So what did the technologist actually see under the microscope? So let's just quickly look at this because this will help you understand this whole thing much, much easier. So here is the smear that was taken from the patient and what you can see here is in the middle there a whole big clump of platelets all right so these other cells around here these are red blood cells um, that you can see there are no white blood cells on this particular smear but you can see this whole clump of platelets here now why is that abnormal well let me show you what a normal one uh, is supposed to look like so this would be a normal uh, a much more normal one also in this one you see a lot of red blood cells but then you can easily identify the platelets each one individually there they're not clumped together like we see up here all right so this is the way it should look in other words when these platelets go through the machine one by one they will be recognized as small and not complex they do not have the nucleus 
while this one could be confused because this little clump will now go through the machine as a whole um, lump and the machine will say well this thing is big so and it's complex so it could well be a white blood cell count so in reality what the machine will do it will actually count white blood cells that are not there it will count these clumps as white blood cells which gives you a falsely raised white blood cell count we call that a pseudo which means false a pseudo leukocytosis at the same time it is not counting all the platelets you can see that because they are all mixed together and counted as white blood cells the machine does not notice them as platelets, does not recognize them as such and you get a low platelet count such as what we're seeing here. So this is called a pseudo thrombocytopenia. In other words, platelet clumping is a cause of a falsely decreased platelet count. So now you'll ask me, why on earth does this happen? And it's actually a very interesting phenomenon. So let's zoom in on one of these platelets quickly. I'm going to try and draw a nice platelet here. Now as you would remember or may have read, um, platelets contain all kinds of little molecules on its surface to communicate and interact with the outside world. And when these things are exposed, they could potentially be recognized by antibodies uh, in some diseases but there may also be antigens that are hidden from the surface so let's say we take one here and one example um, that we could find here is in uh, platelet clumping is a an, an antigen a molecule hidden from the surface but when you add EDTA to this platelet what will happen is something interesting Right, so what will happen here is that the in, 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 uh, when exposed to EDTA, this antigen that we've, that we've shown you here will become exposed on the surface. So it's not hidden anymore, it's now visible from the outside. Now about one in a thousand people, like I've shown here in the beginning, carry naturally occurring antibodies now that's uh, just an example of an antibody not that nicely drawn let's make a nicer one with two heavy chains and two light chains there and these naturally occurring antibodies can bind to this antigen and if you have many platelets like these and lots of antibodies binding these platelets let's just draw some platelets again these platelets will now clump together due to the effect of these antibodies uh, working on or binding to the, the uh, EDTA indu induced or exposed antigen. So you have all these antibodies binding to these platelets and you get a platelet clump such as we've shown here. So where does this happen? Does it happen in the body? No, it only happens in the tube, in vitro. In vitro literally means in the glass, you know, outside of the body. So there's no EDTA in your body, it's only in the tube. So it's only when the platelets in the tube are exposed to the EDTA. So platelets here in the tube exposed to the EDTA here that this change will take place and the antibodies that are floating around in the tube as well will now bind to these platelets and cause them to stick together so it does not happen in the body so what does this mean it really means nothing it means that the patient actually most likely has a normal platelet count it means that the white cell count is also probably normal in real terms so how do you determine the correct platelet count then? Well, you can use a different anticoagulant such as citrate. You can also use things like heparin or oxalate. And just to remember that in, s in a few cases patients may also get platelet clumping on these other anticoagulants. But as a doctor you need to recognize these and you must be able to reassure the patient that this is nothing serious. You may also want to just remember that there are some medications that can cause this platelet counting but still it is not dangerous to the patient. So repeat the blood count with a different anticoagulant and always do a blood smear to exclude clumping.